Hi, my name is Lewis Jones and I'd like to talk to you today about why your business should have a Facebook page. Today we will discuss why businesses should have a Facebook presence and we will also go over how your business can leverage Facebook for your own means. Did you know that 31% of all customers expect companies to post some form of social media content? And did you know that there was a 35% rise in sales in 2014 Facebook pages as opposed to Facebook profiles? This is massive. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about why it's so important. So now, what makes a page different from the profiles is the fact that the page will assign you a category within an industry. So you'd be able to choose tourism and then choose another one such as hospitality. So it would enable people to find you if they were traveling and they would like to find somewhere to eat or somewhere to stay for the night. Uh, the page will also allow you to display your website links, your hours of operations, contests, and a lot more options that you are able to display within your About Me page and other tabs associated. The page is also encouraged to advertise. Um, so it gives you many options that we will go into in a little bit later on in this workshop. The pages also have insights. So they give you access to measurements about how your posts have been doing. You can see who has liked you, and you can see who has shared your uh, posts and all of your content. Using a personal profile, it looks a little bit unprofessional, simply because you are assigned a gender and a hometown and a birthday. And it just it has things on it that really don't pertain to a business. And when you have a business, you really want it to become a professional entity. And having a Facebook page will enable you to be professional within the social media realm. Facebook pages also are encouraged to advertise. And this is huge because it enables you to pay Facebook to put your message and your pictures out and effectively get people to interact with you because of your paid interaction. So I'd just like to take a moment to show you an example of a company in the States, in Texas, that has actually used social media to their advantage to really boost their revenue and their business that they've come to have. So Quick Car is an auto sales and repair shop located in Texas, and it's a family-run business. They are in a very competitive market because there are many, many uh, larger corporations that have shops and facilities within the same area. And so it's a very competitive uh, environment. So what Quick Car did in order to combat this is they took to Facebook and they simply wanted to build their brand awareness and entice customers uh, with deals and reoccurring customers to come back. What they did is they had coupons that they would put on uh, Facebook through their advertisements. And you could bring that in on your mobile device or print it off and they would give you a discounted rate on an oil change or a tire repair or something that the coupon offers. In the period of time that they were advertising on Facebook, they saw a seven times uh, return on their ad spend and they had 470 Facebook offers redeemed through that period. And two of those offers led to major service being done and paid for. So it was a very successful move for Quick Car. And I have a quote uh, by their owner. And it simply says, our business runs on referrals and Facebook is a great way to increase word of mouth. I can easily track which posts or offers are driving results and referring new customers. That is a sentiment directed towards how easy Facebook is to use, to advertise on, and to measure and to see how effectively you are doing that. So it just really does make sense for businesses to use Facebook. And I'm going to show you how to set up a Facebook page, and we'll go in a little bit more about what it'll let you do. So the first thing in setting up a Facebook page is you have to go to facebook.com slash pages slash create. Once you're there, it'll ask you to choose a category for your page. So from the little drop-down menu that it gives you, you simply select the category that is most uh, similar to the one that your business operates within. From there, you will then choose a more specific area of that industry. And then you will be required to fill out some information, like the name of your company, your name, the location, um, a few other bits and pieces in your website. And then it will give you a button at the bottom, and you click that, which says Get Started. And that will take you through the rest of the steps and help you to set up your Facebook page in the simplest form possible. 
This is the Facebook page for the St. Lawrence College Business Program. And they've really, really done a good job of embracing the Facebook page and really putting everything that they want onto it. As you can see, they've got a very clearly defined profile picture. They've got a nice cover photo, which just is colorful and it draws you in. Uh, and then they've got their reviews, and then they've got their content that they've been sharing. So it's really, really nicely set up, and it's very easy to navigate. And when customers come to this site, it's very easy for them to find the information that they want to use and that they need to find. So what information should you include on your Facebook page? Typically, the uh, photos are size sensitive when it comes to the main pictures on your page. So the cover photo and your profile photo, those are the ones that are the, really the main ones to be considered when you are setting up your page and putting pro pictures into it. If you want them to display correctly, your profile picture should be 180 pixels by 180 pixels. Your cover photo should be 851 pixels by 315 pixels. Now a pixel is a unit of measurement that graphic designers use and web designers use to measure the space on a computer screen that something is taking up. You are able to use simple tools on the internet. You can Google uh, simple photo manipulation, and it will bring up a host of very easy to use tools, or you can employ somebody to do this for you. Moving on, the information that you would want to include, as basic as you can, um, on your Facebook page, really would just be to have your business name. You would want to have your address, your description of what you do, your hours of operation, you'd have, want to have a link to your website, and you will want to have any awards that you have received. So as you can see, this is a picture that basically just shows the different sizes of pixels of each photo. So as you can see, the cover photo is 851 by 315, and it takes up the majority of the screen. The profile picture down here is the smaller one, but that's the one that everybody is going to see when you're posting things. It will show up next to your name above your post. So that's the one that really should resemble your company and either be the logo, the name, or something that's very readily identifiable with your brand. This is just a picture of a little bit further down on the timeline uh, of your profile page. And it just simply shows you that if you share a photo, it comes up quite large. However, Facebook automatically adjusts the size of the photos to fit that size. So these ones, you don't have to worry about that much. And then if you have a link that you're sharing, it comes up as a thumbnail that Facebook puts in automatically. So how do you link your website to Facebook? And why should you do it? It's very, very simple. When you go into the information section on your settings for your Facebook page, there's actually a bar that says website. And if you just enter your website uh, URL into that bar, it will end up putting it onto your uh, Facebook page. And it will make it up on the top in the area where it describes your company. And people will be able to click on that and go directly to your website from your Facebook page. So it makes a very seamless transition between Facebook and your online residents. However, if you don't want to take people from Facebook to your website, if you're selling uh, products, you are able to set up a Facebook store. Now, this enables you to take your products, put them into the Facebook store layout, and have customers click on the tab and not even leave Facebook, yet be able to purchase your goods and your products directly from you through Facebook. This is a screenshot of a Facebook store. And as you can see, it's got categories up at the top. It's got the products underneath. It's got pages. And it has the Order Now button. So it's very, very easy to use. But it's still a part of the Facebook page. So you haven't left Facebook. You're still shopping within Facebook. So it helps consumers feel a bit more comfortable when purchasing online. So in 2012, on Facebook, 70% of advertisements redirected consumers back onto Facebook to another area. 30% redirected them elsewhere. 
This shows that many companies are taking advantage of using the Facebook store and using their profiles to have customers and potential consumers really engage and co connect with them through social media without having to leave that social media application. 55% of advertisers don't use uh, the sponsored stories option in advertising simply because it falls among uh, all the different posts that you see in your newsfeed. So most consumers will just sort of skip over them, not realizing that it is actually an ad. Or most companies will end up using the right hand side or the mobile targeting advertisements because these are more proven and they allow you to incorporate pictures, text, and a link to a website or to your Facebook profile. So we're going to go through the different types of advertising and which one would suit you. So what kind of ads are there on Facebook? Well, there are boosted posts and then there are picture ads. The picture ads are by far the best ones to use. As you can see, they've got 53% more likes. They generally generate 104% more comments. And they generate 84% more click-through rates than any other kinds of ads found on Facebook. And a click-through rate is simply when the customer clicks on the ad and follows it through to the landing page that it's connected to. The boosted posts are the ones that show up in your newsfeed and look just like another post from a friend. Organic promotion you cannot buy. This simply happens when a customer interacts with something of yours on your social media and then their friends are shown a story or a post that says that this customer has interacted with your company and it just simply appears in their newsfeed. And you ha don't have to pay for that or anything, it's completely free, but it's very, very hard to achieve. So organic promotion is not something that you have as a goal, but it is something that you do want. And you're probably wondering, well, I've heard all of this stuff about ads. Well, how do I set them up? Let's have a look at that. So this is the general page that will come up when you choose to generate an advertisement on Facebook. As you can see, it has the three different types at the top. So you have a desktop newsfeed, you have the mobile newsfeed, and then you also have a right column. These are the three main types of picture ads that Facebook uses. The mobile one is probably the easiest to get to use. Um, and all you have to do is you just upload an image, any image that you would like. You enter your text, and then you choose your audience. So you can choose the countries that you would like, and then you target different interests that you would like your customers to be interested in in order to have an interest and use for this product. You would then choose their age range, and then you can choose their genders as well. You choose the budget for the day. So what this means is each day you will only spend that much money, and never anymore. But each day, Facebook will continue to use the advertisements to generate that much money. And then once you have finished all of these settings, you cl simply click on Promote Page, and Facebook does the rest of it. Facebook. Uh, puts it into people's news feeds, it puts it onto people's backgrounds, and it starts to put your ads into people's uh, view, and then you are able to track them through the insights. This is a, just simply a picture of the right column ads that I was talking about. So as you can see, they appear in the right-hand column of the Facebook page next to the news feeds, so they stay static. So when you're scrolling, they don't move. So they're always visible, which makes them a very good option because they're always within view of the customer. And this is an example of a promoted post. As I said, they aren't that uh, effective simply because they do appear within the news feed. So it does look as though it is another post from, say, a friend or a company that this person has liked. And so most customers will not realize that, and they will scroll past that. So the advantages of advertising on Facebook are the fact that Facebook has an enormous reach. You are able to target many, many, many people. And the fact that Canada has over 13 million active users each month, that's a massive base to start marketing towards in order to get your company's name out there. 
It has a very low cost per click. Um, so it charges about eight cents per click, whereas Google AdWords will charge about 30 cents. It has an advanced demographic targeting. So you're able to target people based on their interests, things that they like, places they've been, uh, almost any factor that they are able to put on Facebook, you are able to target them using. And it also allows you to use lots of images. It, Facebook really does encourage image use because they're so interacted with them. People really do want to see images in their social media. They want to see things. They want to be stimulated. They really want to have uh, interesting content put in front of them. And then cost per click or CPM cost. This means that you can choose two different methods of payment. You can choose per click to pay, or you can choose per thousand impressions, so per thousand people who have seen your post. It depends on what your, out, like what your final goal is for your campaign. If you're trying to build brand awareness, then going with a cost per thousand impressions would be the way to go. However, if you're trying to generate sales, a cost per click is more likely to be the method to take, simply because you're only paying when a customer interacts with your content and your advertisement. Now, just to look at a couple of the brief disadvantages, there's a lot of work that goes into advertising with Facebook, especially if you have numerous campaigns, then they're going to require a lot of attention to detail. You're going to have to constantly be checking on them and making sure that your ads are going properly and that everything is working together in order to get you to where you want to be with that. And Facebook does have a filtering system to make sure that only relevant ads are shown to customers. However, sometimes it doesn't work that well, and there are rele irrelevant ads that slip through and are projected, sometimes in place of your ad, potentially. And Facebook has a lot of distractions. As I mentioned with the promoted posts, people will scroll past them just thinking they're a part of their newsfeed, because Facebook is, there's everything all over the place. It's a very cluttered screen. So people just tend to look for the key points that they want to see or that they're looking for, such as names or a place or an event. And they will just sort of focus on those. So it, it's a very, very distracting thing to look at. But the advantages do far outweigh the disadvantages. So advertising on Facebook, what are the costs? Well, the costs, as I mentioned, you can pay per click or you can pay per thousand impressions. This is useful depending on what the outcome of your campaign is. Uh, you are also able to split it up so that you are able to choose to either pay by daily budget or by lifetime budget. Daily budget is where you set your budget of, hypothetically, we'll say $5 per day. And you have a campaign for the lifespan of 10 days. That means that every day, Facebook is going to advertise and advertise and advertise and advertise until they have racked up $5 of your advertising money in that day, and then they will stop advertising for you. The next day, they will pick it up, and they will go back up to $5, and then they will stop. So over the course of that 10 days, you will have spent $50. Lifetime budget is simply when you set the budget for the entire lifetime of the campaign. So if over that 10 days you wanted to, say, spend only $10, Facebook would then make it so that it only spends a dollar per day throughout that lifetime of the campaign in order to get you that end result. So as you can see, Facebook really doesn't have uh, a very complicated cost structure. It's very easily laid out, and it's very simple to understand. So what are Facebook Insights? Facebook Insights are the measurements and the statistics of how your social media posts and the community around you, what they're doing, and how you are performing. It measures how many likes, how many shares, how many interactions, who they were, how old they were, what gender they were, what country they're from. It shows you all of this data in a very easy to read format. Um, so the next page here is the main dashboard that you will see when you go into your Facebook Insights. 
And so as you can see, it has fans, and it, you can see the total interactions, how many people have commented, the wall posts, and with the likes all on a scattered line chart. They're all color coded, so it's easy to tell which one is which. And then just over to the side, it shows you how many active fans were engaging with you this week. It shows you the gender split between male and female, and it also shows you their age range, and it gives you a percentage breakdown. So it's very, very comprehensive. It gives you a lot of information to deal with, but it gives you a lot of information to use to your benefit. So you will be able to see if you maybe should be posting more at a certain time as opposed to another one because you have more likes and shares at 4 p.m. on a Friday as opposed to every other day of the week. So then that will tell you that you need to post more on a Friday within the mid-afternoon in order to get the most exposure. So Facebook insights are very, very important if you are going to advertise or even use a Facebook page. So how do you set up Facebook Insights? They're already set up when you start your Facebook page. Um, the main thing that you will see is the people talking about this. And that shows how many people have interacted with pieces of content. And it'll show you another breakdown that shows how many people that they have shown by liking it and interacting with that. It'll show how many people in their friends list has responded to that. Friends of fans. That will show you the base that you can reach if every fan that, of your page likes something, how many friends would see it in total. So it's every single one of your fans' friends counted in one number. So it's, it's a bit bigger than it normally should be, uh, just in the simple fact that not all of that number will see your posts, only a fraction of it will. The reach, that is exactly the number of how many people have seen it or interacted with it in any period of time. Virality, that shows how many people have liked it and shared it and then had somebody else like it or share it. So that shows you what percentage of uh, interactions have gone viral. So it does show you quite a lot of things. It gives you a lot of information to go on. And it really does help you post better and use your Facebook page more to your advantage. So before I finish, uh, I'd just like to leave you with some best practices for your new Facebook page. Always, always have a posting strategy, whether that's you're going to post three times a week or you're only going to post at certain times sporadically throughout the week. As long as there's a plan and you follow that plan to post, then you're more than likely going to be successful in the world of social media just because you are so regularly posting and people know when to look for your information. Always, always be engaging. Always try to give people more information and value in what you are showing them or posting than your competitors. So make yourself into a resource. This will really help your customers to feel uh, that you're a human company and not just one of the big corporations. Always use photos and use a cover photo. The cover photo on your profile page is huge. It's the biggest piece of real estate there, so really use it to your advantage. Use colorful pictures, interesting pictures, or even have it promoting contests or giveaways, anything that will make you stand out. Using pictures in all of your posts, this just simply helps get people to stop for a second, look at what you've posted, and more, nine times out of 10, they will interact with it. Leverage Facebook ads because these will really add to the value and they will help you to really get your company out there on Facebook, help you to really expand your community base and expand your network of customers. Be approachable and be human. I can't say it enough. Customers really want to be able to go to a company and ask any question they want without having the fear of having something pushed in their face to buy it any, at every single twist and turn. So the more human you can be, the more approachable you can be, the more your customers are going to react and interact with you. Complete your About Me section. This is one of the biggest mistakes that companies do is they don't fully take advantage of the About Me section. Filling this out allows customers to find out all information that they would want to find out about your company all in one spot. 
And it just makes so much sense to have everything in one area so that people don't have to run around the internet trying to find out where your store is, how late you're open, and what your phone number is. It just makes sense to have it all in one area. And finally, use the contests. Always run contests that are involve liking something or sharing something. Those are the two biggest ways to increase your organic advertising and also to grow your customer base and also to find out which uh, content works best for your customers. So really, if, as long as you follow those, your Facebook page will work for your business and it will help to grow your business. So thank you and I really hope that this has been an educational workshop and I hope that you've learned something about Facebook pages.